Tonight we're going to do what's called a mass or a group deliverance. And for those of you who have never been in one, let me first of all say that it's nothing that happens here is going to hurt you tonight. And uh, even though you may see and hear some strange things you've never seen and heard before, uh, the enemy, uh, if they start uh, acting up and manifesting wildly, just keep in mind they'll be after me or one of the workers. They probably won't be after you at all. So uh, don't be alarmed. And uh, for some of you visitors, uh, you'll see what a real New Testament church is supposed to be doing. You, wouldn't it be glorious if this popped in every church in America on Sunday morning? <laughs> what a what a time that would be. Now, uh, there are a couple of areas that give demons the, uh, the right or the legal right to have attack and to hold grip on the believer. Demons are <clears throat> not taken out by your salvation, not by a long shot. They're interlopers in the land. And you remember when Israel crossed the river into uh, the Jordan River, it did not take the enemy out of the land. They were still there with wall cities, iron chariots, powerful armies, and they had been there for centuries. There were squatters in the land. And yet God, by divine fiat, had given them the land. Now, because of this, the uh, the similarity is, the, the symbolism is plain. Our land is like that body. It's occupied, but by divine fiat, God has given us freedom. But we are to possess the land by little and by little. Tonight we're going to do some by littling and by littling, okay? All right. <clears throat> there are two areas that cause demons to have power over the believer. Now, some of you may have been through this before. If you have, I encourage you to go, go right along with me in spite of that, because you'd be surprised how many times demons pop up that have been missed in other uh, master group deliverances. Now, the thing that gives the first area we're going to deal with is unforgiveness. And since you've been born again, probably you've heard all about that. Oh, yes, you have to forgive everybody who's hurt and disappointed you. And you said, oh, yes, isn't that nice? And when you feel religious, well, you do. And when you don't feel religious, you say, well, I'll forgive them, but I'll never forget it. And uh, so what you don't realize is you're giving grounds for the enemy. Unforgiveness, Jesus taught us to pray. Uh, when the disciples said, teach us to pray, in the model prayer that he gave, we call it the Lord's Prayer. It is not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer, if you want to read it, it's in John 17. But the, the real model prayer that he gave, we call the Lord's Prayer. In that prayer, he taught us to pray, forgive us our trespasses or our sins, as are with the same measure that we forgive our, those who trespass our sin against us. And he gave this as a commandment because unforgiveness will hurt you far more than the person that has hurt you. If you choose to hold unforgiveness in your heart against somebody who has hurt or disappointed you, then it's going to do you a great deal of damage and you must seek to, to obey what Jesus has said and to forgive those who have hurt or disappointed you. And tonight... I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to take you right through it, and you can do it right on the spot and get the house cleaned out and take away all the legal grounds and all the legal rights the demons have to hold on to you <clears throat> in the area of unforgiveness. Now, some people would say to me, well, why should I uh, forgive them? I didn't do anything. I'm the innocent victim. They did it to me. They hurt, they disappointed me. I didn't do anything. I'm the victim. How come I have to forgive? Because Jesus said so. Because Jesus wants us to enter into the grace of forgiving. When you were saved, how much did God forgive you? He forgave you of everything, didn't he? And he wants us to enter into the grace. By grace, he wants us to enter into the grace of forgiving others who have hurt or disappointed us. Now, 
who hurts people? Well, husbands and wives hurt each other. Ex-husbands and ex-wives are experts at this. Children hurt parents. Parents hurt children. Relatives, close friends, uh, business associates, teachers, preachers. These are people who commonly will be able to hurt or disappoint you. And when they do this, we must forgive because Jesus said to forgive. Now, the reason we forgive them is not because they're right and we're wrong. See, we immediately bristle up and we begin to go on guard because we're protecting ourselves that it's not our fault and why should we forgive? As if we were going to give up something by forgiving them. Actually, it's not a matter of right or wrong. We're just going to forgive them because Jesus said so. And also by forgiving them, we will deliver them over where God can deal with them. Do you realize your unforgiveness may be blocking God's dealing with somebody who's hurt or disappointed? But no matter what, how it goes, you and I need to obey the Lord and forgive those who hurt and disappoint us. You say, well, I'm not going to do it. You know what I'll tell you? Well, I don't care. How about that? You see, the bear is on your back, not mine. My job is not to make you do something, but merely to point out to you what you need to do in order to clear the slates with the Lord. And if you mean business with God, this is one of the first steps you take. And you will continue to take this step day by day, week by week, the rest of your life. When somebody hurts or disappoints you, you will learn to forgive them immediately. Not because they're right, but simply because Jesus wants you to do it. Now, you know, when somebody hurts or disappoints you, you usually <clears throat> go to somebody who's a friend, and you always pick somebody that likes you, and you say, do you know what he did to me? Do you know what she said about me? And they say, oh, I don't blame you. I feel the same way. And we feel so justified because our friends agree with us. Jesus said, forgive them. Forgive. What did he say on the cross? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus has already forgiven us so much. We can afford to forgive the little that others do to us by comparison. Now, it's not always... You say, well, I still, I, I, I just, I don't, I, I don't think I want to. Well, I'm going to give you motivation. You know, <clears throat> if you can't get off dead center to do something, then you need motivation. I'm going to give you some. If you don't forgive those who hurt or disappoint you, you most almost certainly will develop cancer and or arthritis. They are at the unforgiveness is at the root of these things. Even in the secular professions, they've discovered the connection between unforgiveness and these two dread diseases. You say, well, those are diseases. They are spirits. Yeah. I have talked to them repeatedly. And they are there. And about, I would say, I believe that about 95% of them are rooted in unforgiveness. So I would say that it would pay us to root out and find that unforgiveness and take care of it, wouldn't you? Now, it's not that hard to take care of. <clears throat> I'm going to lead you through some little form prayers. And if you mean it, it will be effective. It's amazing. We're going to, what we're going to do, we're going to trash some legal grounds. Uh, we're going to clear the underbrush so we can saw down the trees. We've got a lot of underbrush around. They're protecting the demonic holes. We're going to take away that underbrush by forgiving, first of all. <clears throat> and then we'll move on to something else. So if you want to take part in this, and I hope you will, I'd like you to bow your head and close your eyes. <clears throat> now, that's not because it's more sacred to pray that way. It's because there are some nosy people here. And you know, when nosy people are present, if something happens over here and they're praying, they'd get distracted and they never would finish their prayer. They'd get all, I know not you, but probably the, the person sitting next to you may be the nosiest one in the crowd. And so to protect them, We'll just bow our heads and close our eyes. Keep from being distracted. I want you to concentrate and be absolutely honest with God. All right? Now, when we go through this, 
these names are going to come to you already. God has been stirring up some memories in your mind about people who've hurt and disappointed you. Names and incidents have been clicking up in some of your minds already. And that's because, see, the Holy Spirit's already stirring the pot. He's getting ready to skim that mess off, get all that trash out of your life. So let's make it possible for him to do it by being obedient to the Lord. Repeat after me if you want to take part in this now. Heavenly Father, I confess to you that in the past I have held unforgiveness, sometimes bitterness and resentment in my heart against certain people who have hurt or disappointed me. I now recognize this is sin, and I confess it is sin. And I do now forgive the following people whom I can remember who have hurt or disappointed me. Now then, I want you to very quietly just sit there and let the Lord bring them to your mind. Just mention their names as they come up. Shouldn't have to strain for them. They should come right up. I do now freely forgive them. And if they are living, I ask you to bless them. I also forgive myself for all my many faults and failures. And I accept what you have done for me, for you have freely forgiven me. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for freedom from the load of unforgiveness, bitterness and resentment, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> I should have mentioned also that when unforgiveness remains, it opens the door for bitterness and resentment to come in. They are the ones that open the door wide for cancer and arthritis to come aboard. Now, we've taken away their legal grounds. They're not necessarily gone, although some of you may experience quite a... Uh, relief almost immediately. If you don't, you will. If you meant business, you will before this thing's over. All right, now there's another area that's, in a sense, even more dangerous and gives the demons great grounds to attack the uh, believers. And it's the area of the occult. Now, the occult and witchcraft consist of a lot of things and most of the occult things in the Bible have changed their name like any good criminal. They have aliases and they've disguised themselves and they're coming back with a vengeance in the New Age movement. And in many of the charismatic churches, you'll find streaks of witchcraft operating and witchcraft principles being used. The slain in the spirit is a witchcraft thing, blowing on people is a witchcraft thing, has been for centuries. Nothing new, it's old as witchcraft. <clears throat> now God does not just simply dislike the occult. He hates it, he despises it, he calls it an abomination. And not only that, but those who even dabble with anything in the occult realm, those who even dabble, God says, I will curse you to the tenth generation. I beg your pardon, third and fourth generation. Got a tenth generation curse coming up too. A generation is 40 years. Third and fourth generation means 
that it's going to be for 120 to 160 years of curses. You may be sitting there now not having done anything yourself, but because grandmother, great-grandmother, or somebody back in your bloodline tabled, told fortunes, which for water, things of this sort, you are sitting now under a curse. So are your descendants. And this is a curse from God. This is a curse from God. And it's very serious. And it's a third and fourth generation curse. And you'd be surprised how these things twist and destroy lives. You say, well, that's not fair. I didn't do anything. Well, you have to take that up with God. He made the rules. And he says, he's made a provision for you to get free. If you don't get free, it's not God's fault. Okay? Now, what you say, well, I don't know what the occult is. I thought you might be wondering what it is. The Ouija board, how about that? Parker Brothers turns them out uh, several million a year, and they're little old boards, and most of you have at one time or another run across a Ouija board. You say, oh, yeah, when I was 10 years old, one of my friends down the street had one, and we played with it, and it spelled out words for them, but it didn't do anything for me. I put my hands on it. You did? Well, then you're cursed, your children are cursed, your grandchildren are cursed, your great-grandchildren are cursed. How's that? But I didn't do anything. You didn't have to. I'm telling you, this thing is dead serious. Sorcery. Sorcery has many facets, but I'm going to stress one particular facet. Sorcery, one important facet of sorcery is to open the mind to evil spirits by use of drugs. Does that ring a bell? Drugs, you know, marijuana, speed, acid, crack, cocaine, heroin, the whole drug scene, that's what it's all about. It's sorcery. And you say, well, did you ever drop a hit of LSD just to see how it was? Smoke a joint, you know, so you get high. Did you get high? Hope you did, because you sure paid a high price for it. Every time you smoked one, you were cursed, your children were cursed, grandchildren were cursed, your great-children were cursed. You say, I'm not even married. I don't care. You were cursed, your children were cursed, your grandchildren were cursed, your great-grandchildren were cursed. Your whole family line is polluted by that, what you did. You say, but I've asked God to forgive me. Well, he's forgiven you, and he's going to take you home to heaven, but you're still going to live with this hell that's caused by these curses unless you take them off. And guess what? We're going to show you how to take them off tonight. Get them off of you, off your children, off your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. One reason I like the deliverance is because it, it's the way of liberation. And in Spanish, the word deliverance is translated liberation. I like that because that's exactly what it is. By the word, way, the word salvation in our Bibles really means deliverance. Did you know that? And your your salvation is not complete uh, as it needs to be until you uh, get the salvation provision in it. You're not enjoying the full part of your uh, portion. All right. Witchcraft of any kind. We've heard of black witchcraft, white witchcraft, yellow witchcraft. And I don't know. They may be purple people. I don't know. But there's all kinds of witchcraft. But any kind of witchcraft is hated by God and brings the curse of God. And it's very serious business. And if you dabbled with cur- with witchcraft, say, oh yeah, I bought that little book on spells, and I tried to work a few, and, and I, I drew these little magic symbols and signs. You did? Well, you were cursed, your children were cursed, your grandchildren were cursed, your great. You say, I was just a child. I didn't know. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's see. If you go down here, supposing I hit my car, and I go, I start down here, I'm in Highland, there's some red lights down there, and I go, and here's a stop and go light there. Well, the light is green. Green doesn't do a whole lot for me. Yellow, nah. Red, that's my color. And I go, boom, right through there, you know, because I like red, you know. And uh, <clears throat> then this friendly little man with the, with the bubble, bubble gum machine flashing on top of his car. He comes up and waves at me real friendly, you know. And I, I say, yes, yes, sir. And uh, you wanted something? 
He said, uh, that light was red. Yeah, that's my favorite color. <laughs> and uh, he said, that's against the law. It is. <gasps> oh, I didn't know. He's got his little book out and he says, oh, you didn't know. Oh, all right. Well, now just don't do that again. Is that the way they do it at your place? May I see your driver's license, please? He's writing. Just because you say, I don't know, it was against the law, doesn't change the thing. Just because you didn't know. You see, knowing about the occult is the job of your parents. You say, my parents didn't know anything about it. They were heathens. Or you say, my parents were Christian, but they never told me anything about this. Well, you see, it was the duty of their pastor to tell them. Well, our pastor didn't know anything about it either. It looked like everybody associated with you failed. Is that God's fault? Is it God's fault? No, it isn't. His word is here. The Holy Spirit's here. But the disobedience and the deliberate ignoring of God's word has brought us to this pass where we're running into all kinds of trouble. And so you're cursed, your children are cursed, your grandchildren are cursed, great-grandchildren. Let me give you a few more here. I think we've got something to offend everybody. Uh, water witching, that's, that's uh, why, you call the, why you think they call it witching. My granddaddies, I understand, my, both my granddaddies could do it real good. You say, I knew you were a witch. <laughs> Sorry, wrong number. We broke that and got rid of it when we found out about this in deliverance. Listen, the, there's voodoo, there's divination, that's any kind of fortune telling. That can be to our cards, palm reading, astrology, horoscope, signs of the zodiac, crystal ball, coffee grounds, tea leaves, handwriting and ox, bumps on the head, corns on the toenails. It doesn't matter. Whatever is used in divination, is an abomination to God. And he hates this. And every person, you went to the fortune teller. Oh yeah, when we were kids in high school, we went and everybody was going to the gypsy fortune teller. And I went in there and everybody was coming out there, what'd she tell you? She did. Well, what'd, what'd she tell you? She did. Did you get a bang out of it? I hope you did. Because you paid for it. You were cursed. Your children were cursed. Your grandchildren were cursed. You're great. You said, I wish you'd quit saying that. But I'm just driving it down. I'm driving that nail down. I'm on to brad her over before it's over. I want you to realize this is serious business. You have offended a holy God. I have offended a holy God. I have broken his laws. He considers this spiritual adultery, abomination, and consequently he curses it with a heavy curse. Now, uh, let's go on a little further here. We've got Irene Hughes and, uh, um, Gene Dixon, Edgar Casey, automatic handwriting, all these neat little things, you know. Handwriting analysis, a cute little fortune telling gimmick. Uh, hypnosis, you say it works. Nobody said it didn't work. The devil has to bait his hook with something. Even to hook ignorant people. He puts a little bait on the hook. Hypnosis. You say, hypnosis? That's not witchcraft? Yes, it is. Been around for a long time. See one I'm bubbled up right there. ESP. Extrasensory perception. Oh, you got it, all right. Spiritualism. Medium. Seance. Necromancy. That's talking to the dead. You can do that down at the Catholic Church down the way here, please. Talk to Mary and Joseph and uh, Zenobia and whoever else the saints are. I don't know all their names. I never got acquainted with them, thank God. But we've cast out an awful lot of them. Those are demons. And that's necromancy, talking to dead folks. You're not talking to dead folks at all. You're talking to demons that are imitating the dead folks. Then you have uh, Krishna, I Ching, Confucianism, Hinduism, Taoism, Eastern religion, all branches of the New Age movement are shot through and through with the occult. Uh, anything that anything that has to do, well, the natives are restless. Uh, the uh, 
<laughs> Anything that has to do with visualization, visualization, which is used by Yogi Cho and John Wimber and a lot of the other groups, visualization is an old, old witchcraft technique, and witches will tell you it's the quickest way to contact the spirit world. And you know which spirits they're contacting, don't you? Now, when you do it in church, you contact religious spirits that say, Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Everybody, praise the Lord. Uh, and if you have a holy hiccup on the end, that means it's really super. You've heard them with the holy hiccup, haven't you? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, glow that. Well, glow that. Well, glow that. That does make it more emphatic. You think, boy, she's full of the Spirit. Yes, she sure is. Boy, he's really full of the Spirit. Look at him jerk. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. You know what's doing that? A demon. They start praying in tongues. They start jerk like they got having fits. And they are. That's a demon. You say, you mean their tongues is false? They may be. But you know, I've seen some people that have genuine tongues. But when they got them, they got a hitchhiker. Somebody laid hands on them. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit and were able to speak in tongues. But there was a little holy, uh, there was a little Pentecostal hitchhiker that went along with that that caused them to jerk when they did it. And they thought it was part of the package. Not so. You can get rid of the jerk, keep the tongue. <laughs> you bet. I can see some of you are learning something already. Oh, there's more. Much, much more. All right. <clears throat> Christian science. Now, Christian science I call grape nuts. Grape nuts are neither grapes nor nuts. And Christian science is neither Christian nor scientific. It is simply an occult religion. Mary Baker Eddy wrote the uh, key, to hell, key, to the, uh, key to the Scriptures or something like that. It's too bad she didn't read it first. But anyway, she was a demonized, highly demonized woman lost as a goose in a windstorm, and her Christian science, they work white magic. Now, white magic's when you do nice things for people. And black magic's when you do nasty things. And it's just like an octopus with two tentacles. One of them is white magic. One is black, black magic. They both belong to mama. <laughs> All of it's black magic. The power behind the Roman Catholic Church is black magic, black witchcraft, black witchcraft. It's full of it. That's the, the, the everything in it is powered by witchcraft. That's why the people can't get loose, except by deliverance. Thank God. You say, I guess you hate the Catholic people. Well, I'd be silly to do that when a great majority of my church is ex-Roman Catholic. And you think I'm hard on it, you ought to talk to some of them. Rosicrucians, Theophysy, Unity, Metaphysics, Baha'i, Scientology, Inner Peace Movement, Spiritual Frontiers, you rant here, the Moonies, the Children of God, the Farm, Islam, Black Muslims, the Way, the Walk, and all of these groups that deny the deity of Christ, they're all occult, every one of them. All of these that are teaching a bloodless religion, all of these that are laying aside Bible standards of morality and righteousness and ordaining gays, ordaining all kinds of wicked people into their pulpits, they are all occult and of the devil. And those who are snared in them will be polluted with them. Now there's, of course, biorhythm. That's where you do astrology with a, with a computer or a calculator. It's kind of cute. Uh, of course, if you do it, you're cursed. Your children are cursed. Your grandchildren are cursed. Your great-grandchildren are cursed. Yoga. You say, ah, the yoga. Oh, no. Surely not yoga. I feel so great when I'm doing it. Well, I usually feel great when the dentist shoots my jaw full of Novocaine. 
Because I can't tell what he's doing up there until later. And when you, when you feel great with yoga, you don't know what the enemy's doing. He's working to get kundalini loose from your tailbone and come right up in there. And if you fool with yoga, you've got kundalini in there big as a horse working with Leviathan. He said, I never heard of kundalini. Well, you got him. If you played around with yoga, you got him. Then there's karate and all the martial arts. Not karate. I believe in karate for Christ. I would too if you could do it for Jesus but he's not behind that kind of stuff that is totally occult it comes out of the occult demonic religions and hadn't changed any kung fu all of them all the derivatives taekwondo the whole thing you say are you sure well you bet I've had karate go after me more than one time he's a nasty critter I know one one fellow over in Indonesia. They said, "Come and help help us, Pastor. This this man is the son of the witch doctor, and he's been saved, and he wants deliverance." And I said, "Oh, okay." And uh, I went over. And, you know, the Indonesians are rather small people. I make two or three of each one of them. And uh, they, these young fellows are very enthusiastic. He was sitting in a chair, and I and I said uh, hi, and he said, uh, "I said, I understand your father's witch doctor yet." most famous witch doctor in the Far East, and um, I want to be free. And I said, good. And uh, he said, I said, I understand your father walks on coals of fire. And he said, yes. He said, I do too. I've done that too. And I said, oh, well, I know what that is then. We'll start off with him. With him. I said, Ishkabu, are you there? I'd met him up in Maryland years before. He kicked my leg and started my leg trouble. And uh he said, yes. And I said, well, hi there. Aren't you glad to see me? He said, no, no. I said, do you know me? Yes, yes, I know you. I said, do you remember when we met? Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. I said, do you remember what happened to you? And about that time he's taking off, I said, boys, grab a hold. We're fixing to take off. The, the, the shuttle was launching here. And uh, I was hanging on, and they had to hang on, too. Well, we got Ishkamu out of there, and then he said, I was also a black belt karate, and I thought, oh, my Lord. <laughs> Me and chairs and all these little Indonesians are going to be flying all over the place when this thing comes. <laughs> but being foolish and happy, I said, all right, karate, come out of there. And he said, no, no way. Well, anyway, the upshot of the thing was, he put up quite a struggle. Uh, and, but he came out, and uh, he didn't do as much damage as I've seen do it. One, play, one time I met karate over in the little church in Chicago, and it was a, I was just minding my own business during a service, and I and there was a man, I was minding my business, Rob. Shame on you. And uh, there was a man standing over here. We were in the invitation. People were coming, and, and he was standing over there, and he was standing there doing like this. And I said, I said, Lord, what's the matter with him? And he, he was a new fella. He hadn't been there too long. And he said, just go over there and put your arms around him and tell him you love him. I said, oh, okay. And uh, I'm simple like that. You know, when the Lord tells me to do something, I still do it. And so I walked over there and uh, I put my arms around him. And the Lord said, now tell him, Larry, I love you. I said, all right. So I whispered in his ear, I hugged him, I said, Larry, I love you. And something inside sounded like Vesuvius. And the Lord said, do it again. I said, Larry, I love you. And the Lord said, one more time. And, oh, that was the charm. And when I said that, he just slowly brought his arm up between us. I was standing this close to him. And he just did like this. Whoop. He hit me in the chest and I flew across the room <laughs> without wings, without a parachute or anything. Now, would you like to throw me 12 feet? I'll let you use both hands. You don't even have to do it backhanded like he did. You say, oh, come on, preacher. That couldn't happen. 
I know it couldn't, but I was there. <laughs> and believe me, I flew through the air. Now they say, you know, when you're flying through the air, a lot of things go through your mind. And they do. <laughs> they really do. As I was flying through the air, I made a mental calculation. We had a little platform one size this one. But my calculation was this. According to my calculation, I was going to land right on the middle of my back, right on that platform, and break my back. I knew from experience I didn't fall light. And I thought, uh, the thought flashed through my mind, boy, they got me this time. I'm going to break my back when I hit that platform. I know that's negative confession. But that, but it was, it sure was true calculation. And sure enough, when I got there, I hit the platform. Right in the middle of the back where I thought. But just before I hit, something caught me. And I would have bumped harder sitting in a chair. I just barely touched that. Just kind of, whew. I never have felt like a feather before. <laughs> Nor since. But, uh, but I wasn't hurt at all. Of course, it was a little undignified. Here's the pastor in a heap over there. And the people are rushing in. And uh, this monster is screaming and cursing. And there's about six, eight men trying to put him on the floor. And since he doesn't know anything about the law of gravity, he doesn't know that when you push you down, you're supposed to go down. He just comes up dragging all the men with him. Well, anyway, when that happened, down he went. And uh, they were pulling him down. And people rushing over to me, helping me get up and get my dignity back together, which had been considerably ruffled by flying through the air. And they said, are you all right, Pastor? And I said, yes. They said, are you sure? They thought I broke my back, too. They couldn't believe it. Well, anyway, the upshot of it was I got up and I walked back over. And by that time, the men had the thing, the nasty thing pinned on the floor. And he was screaming and screaming and cursing and everything. And I walked over and I looked down at him. By that time, I was a little indignant. I said, you tried to break my back. He said, yes. I said, well, you know, demons don't get much good news, so I thought I'd, I'd encourage him. I said, I said, did you see that angel catch me? He said, there were 13, you stupid fool. <laughs> I, I guess it takes more for some folks than does others. But at any rate, his karate a spirit, oh, you bet. And he's a powerful spirit. But Jesus is bigger. And I faced karate many times. And, uh, oh, you may get a bruise now and then. That's, that's what you call battle scars. And uh, you'll, you'll recover. You'll live. But you must forsake all of this. Acupuncture comes out of Chinese witchcraft and karate. The Freemasons, Eastern Star, and ladies, you pierced ears are associated in the Bible with harlotry, with idolatry, and, let me see, harlotry, idolatry, and slavery, yes. That's the associations of the scripture, and God doesn't like it. And so, you say, well, I'm not taking mine out. Fine. Then you can have all the female trouble you want, because a lot of that's strong. Bell's palsy. The Hammonds ran across it years ago. A lady with Bell's palsy, and that's when they found out that the pierced ears were at the root of the thing. You say, I'm not taking mine out. Fine. Not bother me. I'm not wearing them. And uh, some of you fellows have them. <laughs> well, cooey. Uh, uh, we won't go into that. The fellows, your tattoos are in the same um, category. And then there's little charms. You may have some charms around. You say, no, I don't think I have any of those. Don't be too sure. The hexagram. You have the hexagram? Well, you may call it the Star of David in a circle. Star of David? Well, that's the seal of Solomon. It's the Mogan David, an ancient witchcraft symbol. It always has been. And there was a big battle in Israel when they adopted that symbol for the state of Israel because there were some people over there in the occult in Israel and there were some fundamental Jews who didn't want that to be the symbol for Israel because they knew it was a witchcraft symbol. And they guess who won? Well, you know what kind of, kind of symbol they got? Star. They got the six-point star. Well, that's a hexagram. The Bible says don't bring any cursed thing into your house lest you be cursed with a curse that's upon it. 
So you can bring that jewelry, hang it around your neck. You're inviting enemy spirits. That thing belongs to enemy spirits. That belongs to you. The pentagram, that's the five-pointed star in a circle upside down with the goat's head up. Eastern stars got it right. They've got it just like it belongs as a pentagram. That's, that's a wicked symbol. The ankh is a little cross with a loop on top. Oval loop on top, and that's the ancient uh, symbol of the Egyptian fertility goddess, the goddess of lust. So you wear that on a ring or, or on a, around your neck, and uh, you're giving uh, open the doors for lust. By the way, you might be, meet witches or warlocks who know what it means, and they may proposition you because they figure, well, there's a, there's an old sister that doesn't know the, uh, that's open for lust because they're wearing a symbol of lust. I just don't believe that sort of thing makes any difference. Go ahead and wear it. The Italian horns, that little wiggly horn, got so popular, you know. <laughs> it means I trust Satan for my finances. Maybe that's why you're having trouble. The goat's head, of course, that's this. The satanic salute. And the unicorn, flying horse rainbows. Of course, that's in the, that's the New Age symbols. Enchantments, fetishes, potions, spells, dungeons and dragons, occult games like that, psychic readings, reincarnation, pyramid, clairaudience, mental science, false visions, superstitions, amulets, Italians, Satanism, karma. These are some of the occult spirits. Now, if you've dabbled in any of these, then you're cursed, your children are cursed, your grandchildren are cursed, your great-grandchildren are cursed. Now, there is a way to take care of that. And we're going to do that. <coughs> it's quite simple, really. There's, uh, Satan is a legal expert. And as long as he has legal rights to be somewhere, you cannot budge him. I don't care who you are. Uh, you can throw your coat at him or blow on him or whatever, and he's not going to go anywhere. You've got to take away the legal grounds. That's what we're doing. Now we're going to take away the legal grounds on the occult. If you've ever been involved or... You say, well, I don't think I've ever been involved. Well, your ancestors may have been, so take no chances. Let's renounce it. It's not going to hurt you to renounce it. It might hurt you not to. So if you would bow your head, please, for concentration, and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I confess to you that in the past, through ignorance, curiosity, or willfulness, I have come into contact with certain occult things. I now recognize this as sin. I renounce all such contacts. All contacts with these occult things. Now, quietly you tell the Heavenly Father, the ones that come to mind, any kind of occult thing that you come in contact with that you know about. Just mention them by name. So renounce and confess as sin any false oaths which I may have made to any false god or any idolatry in which I have been involved. I renounce it all. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I'm closing any doors which I may have opened to you or which my ancestors may have opened to you to you and your demons. I renounce Satan and all his demons. I declare them to be my enemies. And I want them out of my life completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now claim deliverance from any and all evil spirits which may be in me. 
once and for all, I close the door of my life to all occult practices, and I command all connected and related spirits to leave me now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break any curses of rejection. Rejection from the womb. Any curses of illegitimacy which may be in my family even back to ten generations on both sides of my family. In the name of Jesus Christ I now renounce break and loose myself from all demonic subjection from any ungodly soul ties to my mother, father, grandparents, or any other person, living or dead, who have ever dominated or controlled me in any way which is contrary to the will of God and contrary to the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I also repent. I ask you to forgive me if I have ever dominated or controlled some other person in the wrong way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now renounce, break and loose myself and all my descendants from all psychic heredity, every demonic hold, psychic powers, bondage, bonds of physical or mental illness, or curses, which may be upon my family line as a result of sins, transgressions, iniquities, occult or psychic involvements of myself, my parents, or any of my ancestors, of my spouse, any and all ex-spouses, or their parents, or any of their ancestors. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now renounce, break and loose myself, and all my descendants from all evil curses, charms, vexes, spells, jinxes, psychic powers, bewitchments, witchcraft or sorcery, which may have been put upon me or my family line. from any person or persons or from any occult source or psychic source. I renounce all connected and related spirits and command them to leave me now. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command Satan and all his demons Loose my mind completely. I ask you, Father, to send your angels to break, cut, and sever. <coughs> Stay out. All fetters, bands, chains, ties, and bonds of whatsoever sort. The enemy has managed to place on my mind by word or deed. I ask you to loosen to me and my family the spirits of the Lord. Wisdom, counsel, might. Knowledge, fear of the Lord. Power, love, sound mind. Grace, peace. 
and the Spirit of the Lord. Father in heaven, I break and renounce and cut all evil soul ties which I may have with lodges, religious systems, adulterers, drunkards, close friends, cults, or any other ungodly connections. I want all evil soul ties severed now. Heavenly Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, To send out angels now. To gather up the fragments of my soul. And restore them to their rightful place in me. For the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask that the angels unearth and break. All earthen vessels. Bonds. Bands or bindings, which have been put upon my soul by any means. Restore all the pieces of my fragmented mind, will, and emotions. My appetite, intellect, heart, and personality. Bring them all into proper and original positions where they belong. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break in in all evil curses placed against me by witchcraft. I command that all these curses be broken now and that the spirits from them along with the curses be returned to the sender. In accordance with Leviticus 6, 26. Leviticus 26, I'm sorry. I do now confess the sins of my ancestors. Sins of idolatry. Witchcraft. Occultism. Lust. Adultery. Divorce. Perversion, Perversion. Rebellion, rebellion, stubbornness, stubbornness and, wicked and wicked heart of unbelief. I claim forgiveness, I claim forgiveness. because of the provisions of 1 John 1 9. And accordingly, I break the curses. I lift the curses, whoredoms and iniquities, from me and my descendants. I command all spirits associated with these to leave me and my family and to go wherever Jesus sends them. I come to you, Lord Jesus. You are my deliverer. You know all my problems, all the things that drive, torment, defile and harass me. I now loose myself from every dark spirit, from every evil influence, from all satanic bondage, from every spirit in me, which is not a spirit of God. I command all such spirits to leave me now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess that my body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Redeemed, cleansed, sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan has no more place in me, no more power over me because of the blood of Jesus. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, I put you and your legions on notice that we are attacking you from our 
our position in Christ at the right hand of the Father in the third heaven. This places us high above you, your principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, world rulers, rulers of darkness, kings, princes, and every angelic rank under your command. Right, now I'll go ahead and finish this up. You just wait quietly for a moment. In Jesus' mighty name, I ask the Father for sufficient legions of holy angels to bind every satanic force here and in the air overhead. I ask you, Father, to bind these things up so they will not be able to interfere in any way. I come against every evil spirit that's loose in this place, in this auditorium, in every part of the building, in every nook and cranny, hiding in all the closets. I ask you to send angels and scour them out in the open and bind them up in the attic. Bind those spirits that are flying around loose. I want you to bind them and take them away to wherever Jesus wants them to go. Get them out of here. Won't no interference at all. And may legions of angels be all over this place. I pray, Lord, that you'll send angels to the cars of the individuals that are here, to their rooms, to their apartments, to their houses, that the demons may work no mischief. And even to the homes far away, people who are from a distance, that you will send protection and legions of angels out to protect all these people. Let the demons accomplish nothing except to leave. And we ask you to do this in Jesus' mighty name. Well, we'll get going now. I come against all the spirits of the occult first. All the spirits from the Ouija board, sorcery, witchcraft control, spirits of witchcraft, water witching, magic, voodoo, divination, fortune telling, Gene Dixon, Edgar Casey, Irene Hughes, automatic handwriting, handwriting analysis, tea leaves, coffee grounds, crystal balls, tarot cards, palm reading, astrology, horoscopes, signs of the zodiac. Come out now. Just take slow, deep breaths, people, and breathe them out. Let them go. Come out of there. Breathe them out. Breathe them out. If you want them out, breathe them out. Just slowly. Come on out in Jesus' name. Leave now. Spirits of hypnosis, ESP, spiritualism, medium, seance, necromancy, levitation, table tipping, clairvoyance, transcendental meditation, astral projection, ekintar, soul travel, mind control, ESP, Come out now. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. This this is typical demon behavior. They don't care for this place or me. You just can't be popular with everybody. <clears throat> now, where were we? Irene Hughes, automatic handwriting, handwriting analysis, tea leaves, coffee grounds, Crystal ball, tarot cards, palm reading, hypnosis, spiritualism, medium seance, necromancy, levitation, table dipping, clairvoyance, transcendental meditation, astral projection, ekinkar, soul travel, mind control, ESP. Come out now. Breathe them out, people. Just take slow, deep breaths. <sighs> like that. Two or three, two or three breaths will do it if they're ready to come out. All spirits from Eastern religions, Hinduism, Taoism, Confucianism, I Ching, Krishna, Zen, PSI, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian Science, Rosa Christians. I'm ringing. I'm ringing. I've got a back right feed, boys. Get on that brow back there. Unity, Metaphysics, Baha'i, Scientology. Inner Peace Movement, Spiritual Frontiers, Uranium, Moonies, Children of God, The Farm, Islam, Black Muslims, The Way, The Walk. Come out of there now in Jesus' name. Move. Breathe them out, people. Out. Just breathe them out in Jesus' name. Let them go. Come out of there now in Jesus' name. Spirits of Biorhythm, Yoga, Karate, 
All the martial arts, come out now. Come out. Come out now in Jesus' name. Acupuncture, Freemasons, Eastern Star, spirits from pierced spheres and tattoos, spirits from charms, hexagrams, pentagram, the onk, the Italian horn, the goat's head, spirits from psychic readings, reincarnation, clairaudience, mental science, false vision, superstition, amulets, talisman, Satanism, karma, and hex signs. Come out now. Breathe them out. Take two or three slow, deep breaths and let them go, people. Let them go. I come against all the spirits of the new age, the ascended masters and the spirit guides. In Jesus' name, let the angels come by the legion to attack, bind, and pull down all spirits of mind control, mind occult, mind binding. Come out now in Jesus' name. Loose them and let them go. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come out now. Breathe them out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him now. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Come out of him. Come out of him. Come out. Come out of him. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind, rebuke, cast down, and strip the powers from all the New Age gods. Reincarnation, woman's movement, masters of wisdom, the Gerus, spiritual teacher, channeling, visualization, inner healing, crystal helpers, universal intelligence, holy one, initiate, magician, Orion, high priest, high priest, come out, high priest, prophet, new age prophet, power woman, star, warlock, witch doctor, witch and wizard, come out, come out, come out, come out now, <coughs> come out now in Jesus' name, all spirits of legalism, externalism, hypocrisy, Religious bondage, religious slavery, religious murder, spirits of lust and ambition for recognition, lust and ambition for position, lust and ambition for power and control in religious matters. Come out now in Jesus' name. Spirits of Jezebel, we break the curse of Jezebel back to ten generations, both sides of the family. Spirits of Jezebel, come out, come out now. Come out now in Jesus' name. False love, false gifts, false tongues, false discernment, false laying on of hands. All the spirits that came, come out. <coughs> come out now in Jesus' name. Self-serving spirits, selfishness, greed, no love, religious coldness, no compassion, spirits of religious robbery, cheating, pretense, False oath, blockages, rigid theology, obstructionism, hatred of the truth, Nimrod, Semiamorous, and Tamaz. Come out. Breathe them out, people. Just breathe them out and let them go. Just breathe them out and let them go. All spirits of Roman Catholicism. We come against idolatry, Catholic baptism, prayer to the saints, dedication to the priesthood, dedication to be a nun. One true church, one holy priesthood, spirits of the mass, holy Eucharist, and adoration of the host, incense. Come out now. Come out now. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. The sorrowful mysteries of the rosary, the joyful mysteries of the rosary, holy mother church, authority of the pope, fear of the priest and the nuns, confessional, holy water. Sacred Heart of Jesus, Holy Family, Stations of the Cross, Rosary, Crucifix, Spirits of Candles, Blessing of the Throat, same place. Spirits of St. Joseph, Guardian and Protector of Mary and Jesus. Fear of Hell, Fear of Purgatory, Guilt, condemnation, unworthiness, good works, 
Mind control. Holy orders. Extreme unction. Confirmation. Sacraments. Benediction. Human bone relics in the altars. The Catholic altars. Genuflecting. Feast days of the saints. Spirits from votive candles. Witchcraft control. Forced celibacy. Poverty. Religious medals. Spirits from sacrifice of the mass. Angel of good counsel. Sign of the cross. Spiritual adultery. Indulgences. Infant of fraud. Religious hatred. Worship and veneration of Mary. Immaculate conception of Mary. Sacred heart of Mary. Immaculate heart of Mary. Mary, Queen of Heaven, Mary Olatry, May Altars in honor of Mary. Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Mercedes, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of the Snows, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Queen of Martyrs, Queen of Peace, Mary, Star of the Sea, Novenas, Scapulars, Spiritual Blindness, Spiritual Deafness, Feast of Peace, Feast of Life, Lent, Destruction of the family priesthood. Passion spirits of agony and ecstasy. Ashes on Ash Wednesday. Spirits of St. Teresa and Little Flower. St. Christopher. St. Jude. St. Catherine. St. Anne. St. Elizabeth. All the Catholic saints. Come on out in Jesus' name. Spirits of profanity. Blasphemy. Filthy conversation. Spirits of lying, gossip, slander, whining, complaining, self-pity, criticism, mockery, foolishness, ridicule, and perversity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Profanity, blasphemy, filthy conversation. Come out of that voice box right now. woman let her go. Loose her. Loose her. Go. 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 Get out in Jesus' name. I break every curse of the automatic failure mechanism in working in families, even back to 10 generations of Bosaja family. I break the curse of the automatic failure mechanism. Now the spirits of poverty, discouragement, failure, worthlessness, and rejection that came in under this curse, come out now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come on, move. Poverty. Poverty, discouragement, failure, worthlessness, and rejection that came under the automatic failure mechanism. Come out now in Jesus' name. Move. Come out in the name of Jesus. All spirits of addiction rooted in rejection. We're coming after you. Gluttony, overeating, bulimia, anorexia nuversa, binging, addiction and craving for food and sweet. All right, anorexia, come out. Anorexia nervosa, come out of there. Sex spirits that came in through the eyes, 
through the ears, through participation, through transfer or inheritance. You come out now, masturbation, guilt, shame, condemnation, pornography, homosexuality, lesbianism, sex perversion of all kinds, including oral sex, anal sex, bestiality, sadism and masochism, spirits of incest, rape, fornication, adultery, immorality, prostitution, harlotry, occult sex, uncleanness, filth, filthy dreams, filthy conversation, filthy imagination, sexual flashbacks, sexual fantasies, frigidity, impotence, cruelty, inconvenience, succubi, lasciviousness, lewdness, nudity, promiscuity, flirting, seduction, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Come out of the sex organs, come out of the lips, the tongue, the face bugs, the throat, and the mind, in Jesus' name. Move, breathe them out, people, let them go. Come on out of there. Hurry up, move, in Jesus' name. Come out, in Jesus' name. Come on out of there. I break all the curses of deformity, infirmity, and sickness on the people. That's the ten generations on both sides of the family. Come out of there now. Spirit of sickness and deformity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Sickness and infirmity. Infirmity spirit, come out. Come out of the bowels. Come out of the intestines. Come out of every organ in the body. Sickness and infirmity, come out now in Jesus' name. Come on out in Jesus' name. Move, come on out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. All spirits of pain, arthritis, swelling, infection, cancer, ulcer, tumor, cysts, and weakness, come out now. Fatigue unto death. Fatigue unto death. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come on. Ulcer, cancer, tumor, and cysts. Come out. Come on out of there in Jesus' name. Lee, come out in Jesus' name. I break the curse of allergies on the people. Back to ten generations on both sides of the family. Spirits of hay fever, asthma, bronchitis. All spirits of hay fever, asthma, bronchitis, and other sinus and respiratory system allergies. Come out now. Hay fever, asthma, bronchitis. Come out now. Sinus, sinuses. Come out of the sinuses. All spirits causing swelling, itching, burning, infection, excess drainage and irritation. Come out of the lungs, out of the bronchial tubes, out of the mouth, and out of the sinuses. All allergies to food, chemical substances. Come out of the bloodstream or whatever part of the body you're hiding in. Come out now. Allergies. Allergies. Come out now in Jesus' name. Allergies. Come out in the name of Jesus. Spirits of Candida. Come out in Jesus' name. Candida, come out in Jesus' name. Spirits of hemorrhoids, muscle spasms, cramps, drowning, asphyxiation, choking, smothering, fainting, swelling, fits, convulsions, and epilepsy. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Spirits of heart failure, heart attack, heart disease, and all the fear of all of these. Come out of the muscles of the heart, out of the bowels of the heart out of the nerves, out of the blood vessels, spirits of hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, high and low blood pressure, come out now, breathe them out people, let them go, come on out of there, hurry up, leave, spirits causing diabetes, gallbladder problems, kidney infection, MS, muscular dystrophy, crippling spirit, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, Spirits of psoriasis, eczema, acne, wart, mold, spirits of bone breaker, the back breaker, traumatic shock and paralysis. They can't, they can't do that because they're open windows. Turn the air conditioning on. We want air conditioning. It's too hot. It's going to run out the window. Spirits of cataract, glaucoma, astigmatism, blindness, and all kinds of eye trouble. Come out now in Jesus' name. 
spirits of deafness, hard of hearing, vertigo, and troubles related to the ears and the hearing come out of the people now in Jesus' name. All religious spirits, religious spirits of legalism, externalism, hypocrisy, religious bondage, religious slavery, religious murder, lust and ambition for recognition, lust and ambition for position, lust and ambition for power and control in religious matters. Come out of the people now. Spirits of false love, false gifts, false tongues, false discernment, false word of wisdom, false prophecy, religious dominance. Come out now in Jesus' name. Self-serving spirits, selfishness, greed, no love, religious coldness, no compassion, spirits of robbery, cheating, pretense, false oaths, blockages, rigid theology, obstructionism, hatred of the truth, spirits of Nimrod, Simeamus and Nemoz, come out now in Jesus' name. I come against the Babylonian spirits of the Roman Catholic Church, spirits of idolatry, Catholic baptism, prayer to the saints, dedication to the priesthood, dedication to the Anon. Come out of there now in Jesus' name. Spirits of one true church, one holy priesthood. Spirits from the Mass, from Holy Eucharist, adoration of the host and incense. Come out now in Jesus' name. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. The sorrowful mysteries of the rosary. The joyful mysteries of the rosary. The glorious mysteries of the rosary. Holy Mother Church, authority of the Pope, infallibility of the Pope, fear of the priests, fear of the nuns, confessional, holy water, fear of the sacred heart of Jesus, sacred heart of Mary, holy family, spirit from stations of the cross, spirit from the rosary, the crucifix, candle, blessing of the throat, St. Blaise, Spirits of fear of hell, fear of purgatory, guilt, condemnation, unworthiness and good works, mind control and holy orders, come out now in Jesus' name. Spirits of extreme unction, confirmation, spirits from the sacraments, benediction, human bone relics in the altar, genuflexing, feast days of the saints, votive candles, witchcraft control, forced celibacy, poverty, Spirits from religious metal, sacrifice of the mass, angel of good counsel, sign of the cross, spiritual adultery, indulgences, infant of fraud, and religious hatred. Come out now. The worship and veneration of Mary, Mariolatry, immaculate conception of Mary, sacred heart of Mary, Mary, Queen of Heaven. May altars in honor of Mary, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Mercedes, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of the Snows, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Queen of Martyrs, Queen of Peace, Mary Star of the Sea, the Blue Army, Spirits of the Blue Army, come out now in Jesus' name. Novena, Scapular, Spiritual Blindness, Spiritual Deafness, Feast of Peace, the Feast of Life, Lent, Destruction of Family Priesthood. The Passion Spirit of Agony and Ecstasy, Ashes on Ash Wednesday, St. Teresa, St. the Little Flower, St. Christopher, St. Jude, St. Anthony, St. Catherine, St. Anne, St. Elizabeth, and all the saints, come out now in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. You loose them and let them go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Loose the people and let them go. Now, if you need help, where you are, we'll get somebody to you to help you.